you seem to be having fun with all of this. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a nerd and a goofball, and that's where I think we all get along. We're all pretty goofy in this this group of guys. And, uh, we're trying to get Romeo a little bit out of his shell, though. We got, we got work. <laughs> Did you do that by playing video games at whatever time it was last night? Uh, I was playing Catan on my Switch. Uh, I'm a huge Catan guy, so the fact that they down, they made it available on the Switch where you can play multiplayer and single player. The fact that they have a single player mode, they should have never done that. <laughs> <laughs> Brand, I did ask you at the, the press conference about your inside game. Have you talked that thought, some, given some thought about how your inside game would be able to translate to the game right now? Oh, no doubt. I'm um, a guy that I feel like that will translate, but also have a lot more from my game that, that yeah. people may know. So I'm a little versatile for my game, too. So uh, being able to play on the interior is not really what you need in nowadays, but having that in your toolbox is always necessary because when it's late shot clock, your personality off the floor seems to kind of contradict the personality on the floor. How do you get how do you get to that other mode on the floor? It's honestly pretty funny. It's like I'm still probably probably a pretty goofy guy and pretty uh, uh, nerdy and still like on the court because I don't talk trash. I'm a guy that just loves to compete I'm in the same way. Like it's kind of like when I play card games or you see when I play guitar. Like I'm just a pretty competitive guy. So I feel like that just brings it out of me. I love winning. I love um, adding to winning. So for me, it's always been about finding a way to do that any way possible. And that's where that I think that toughness and that competitive edge comes from. The round earth comments really took off when you got drafted by yourself. <laughs> so I said, they, they made me seem like I hate Kyrie. It's like, oh, wow. I was just trying to, try to say something scientific. <laughs> Use my mom to her advantage. Yeah. So did you go into the season telling Coach Barnes, like, it's probably it for you? Well, honestly, um, I went into the process just open-minded. Uh, I, I, that's how I kind of took it every year, but I wanted to be able to have my degree in my pocket uh, before I left school. And I also told Coach Barnes that we didn't really talk about much during the year. It wasn't really my, my focus. My focus was winning games, and that's where we kind of had that connection because Coach Barnes, um, I think, kind of loved the fact that I never really like, been brought it up or was really, like, thinking about it. He was, I was just focused on the season day by day, and after the year we sat down and talked about it. And he tried to give it the, the best advice possible, and um, he was there for me, and I thank him for that, because he never really put any pressure on me. He was a guy that wanted me to make the best decision for myself, because he knew either way it was going to be um, a good decision. And he trusted me, because um, I trusted him. Yeah, uh, you guys were number one last year, and what was uh, Oh, it was incredible. Um, for guys that to be used for that were picked 13th in the league and not expect to win in the next year, we never be fortunate enough to be number one country in five weeks. It was definitely experience that was really great for life because we were kind of on that like high and they could down humble with us and be nice. And then <laughs> we went back to that low, we got our edge and competitive effort back. So um, it was definitely something that I'll be able to look back on and be proud of. Um, to say, Especially the group of guys in the past. Like we had a bunch of guys who really cared about each other. We had guys that um, really believed in what we wanted to accomplish. And that, that's what we were all about. Grant, what's, what's it like growing up watching the NBA take off to a positionless basketball where guys like you know your side start to play everywhere? Oh, I said I said this. I said, you're looking back before, it's kind of like in either, either era, you're going to have that like conflict where their guys can translate. But I said it's more more modern now, where it's like they want guys like myself and, and our size, where we can defend both positions, be versatile, and play both ends of the court. And that's something that I can help to take advantage of and, and pursue and keep going forward with. And it's really exciting because you look back in history, it's like you have guys more modern like Draymond and those guys. And then before that, you had to go be a Charles Barkley type. Like six, he was six four, six five, doing what he did, and uh, Chuck Hayes and think of guys like that and that size who played that four position. Thanks, man. Thanks, everybody.